Use a 19 millimeter socket. Let's remove the lug nuts. Go ahead and remove the wheel and set it aside. So we went ahead and we put the key in the on position inside the vehicle. That's gonna allow us to go ahead and turn our wheels like so. And we're gonna start with here is we're gonna come to our brake bleeder screw. We're gonna pop off our rubber cap using a 10 millimeter wrench. We're just gonna go ahead and loosen this. And we have here is a little bit of brake fluid dripping and that's exactly what we want. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our ratchet. We're just gonna snug this back down for now, we're gonna come back to this. Using our 13 millimeter socket and ratchet, we're gonna go ahead and loosen these bolts on the caliper. Go ahead and spin these bolts out. And we're gonna remove them both. At this point here, we have our two caliper bracket, uh, caliper bolts out. We're gonna use a pry bar and we wanna go ahead and work our caliper off here. You wanna be careful when you're loosening this that it doesn't just fall off. It'll add premature pressure to, or stretching pressure to our brake hose here. We don't want that. So just work that free. I'm gonna use our hanger. I'm gonna hook this on our strut spring just to hold this up and out of the way. Remove your pads from the shims here. Using a 15 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and remove our caliper bracket bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and spin these bolts out and remove both of them. Once that bolt is out, your caliper bracket will be free. Go ahead and set that aside. Now on our particular brake rotor, we have a T30 Torx screw holding the rotor to the wheel hub. If your vehicle doesn't have it, that's not a big deal. It just means that your rotors were probably removed at one time or another before. Now with age, our screw happens to be stripping out. Not a big deal. Simply, we're just gonna go ahead and drill this off and we'll go ahead and remove the rotor. Let's go ahead and use our mallet. We'll go ahead and remove our brake rotor. Remove that and set it aside. The screw we just drilled out to remove our brake rotor is not a necessary critical component to our braking system. At this point here, we're just going to go ahead and grind this smooth with the face of the hub. So when we put our brake rotor back on, it won't interfere with the, uh, with the seating of that brake rotor. It'll be nice and smooth. Now we're gonna do is grab your caliper. I'm gonna bring this down and over. And what we wanna do is we're gonna use our tool to compress the dual pistons back into the caliper. Before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this to go ahead and let the brake fluid come out of the back side of this to make it easier to compress these pistons here. That's why we loosen this prior to disassembling everything. And we're just setting up our caliper tool, getting that into place. Let's go ahead and loosen this. Now I want to have some rags or a catch can underneath to catch this brake fluid. We have fluid coming out. Let's go ahead and compress this and you'll see the fluid coming out. We're compressing our pistons in. Once those are compressed all the way in, go ahead and tighten up your bleeder screw. 
and snug that down. We'll release our tool and we can see that our pistons are both completely pressed into our caliper and our seals all look good here. So let's go ahead and hang this back up and out of the way. Using a 34 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and remove our axle nut here. Now our spindle or axle should be loose inside of our wheel hub. Ours seems to be stuck a little bit. I'm just kind of give the end a couple taps. You can see that it is moving inside the hub. So we're good with that. Now right here we have our ABS speed sensor. It's held on by a little metal retaining clip. So we're just going to work that off, push that off. I'm going to lift up on this little tab and separate the connectors. There are three nuts on the back side of our wheel hub or bolts. There's one here right behind the tie rod end. There's one at 12 o'clock up on the top here. And then there's one roughly at about nine o'clock on the other side, it's a triangular pattern. We're gonna use our 13 millimeter socket and extension to go ahead and loosen these bolts. Now the bolts themselves, we didn't re remove completely. We were left them in roughly about two thirds of the way. You can take them out to about halfway through our hub. What we're gonna do now is start to work the hub away from the knuckle and the studs themselves, the three bolts, will actually hold the wheel hub from falling off. I'm gonna go ahead and work this out. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses when doing a job like this. Now that we have the wheel hub loose, we can go ahead and remove the rest of the bolts here. We can remove the three bolts completely and set those aside. With the three bolts removed, let's go ahead and pull the hub off. Go ahead and remove your backing plate. Remember that the notch on the, uh, on the backing plate goes towards the front to accommodate your brake caliper. Now the back side of our bearing cover our seal here separated from our bearing. So it is stuck in our knuckle. At this point here, we're just gonna use a, a chisel tip and we need to get between the knuckle and the unit itself. And we're gonna try and work our way around. I'm gonna do this all the way around the perimeter to try and loosen this up and separate the corrosion from the aluminum to the steel backing of the bearing. It is starting to come loose, so we're just gonna go from the back side and try and tap it out through the front. Now on the inside of our aluminum knuckle, we have some corrosion buildup here, and we're gonna use 400 grit sandpaper. And we're just gonna clean off the corrosion. We wanna make sure that the aluminum is nice and smooth so our new wheel hub will slip in nice and easy. You don't wanna remove aluminum. You just wanna clean the uneven chunky stuff off of this. You can work your way all the way around the perimeter on the inside here. Now that we have this all sanded down, we're gonna put a light coating of grease on the surface where the hub is going to line up and go. I'm gonna go ahead and put some grease on the splines of the CV axle as well. Let's go ahead and line up our backing plate here and take our unit here, slide our ABS sensor through the knuckle. this on. So we cleaned up the threads on our bolts. We put a little bit of blue Loctite. I'm going to feed this through the back of the knuckle, through our backing plate. Let's go ahead and get this hub lined up. 
And once we get this lined up, we'll get all three of the bolts started in there and then we'll snug them down. And I'm gonna go ahead and work our way around to the three bolts and tighten these down evenly. Let's work these down to 96 foot pounds. repeat for the other two. I'm going to go ahead and install our little slider clip here. Install our harness. Pop that on, lock that in, and then press this in to lock it into place. Let's go ahead and install our axle nut, and we'll snug that down. I'm going to install two lug nuts. I want to go ahead and tilt this down to 119 foot pounds. All right, let's go ahead and remove the lug nuts. And we'll set those aside. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of anti seize compound on our hub face here. I'm going to go ahead and install our rotor, but you want to make sure that the recessed screw hole lines up with the hole in your hub here. You can set that on. Now at this point here, once you have your rotor on, if you still have your screw for this here, you can go ahead and install that. In our case here, we don't have that screw and it's not critical to the operation of our brakes. So at this point here, let's go ahead and press our rotor on, line up our caliper bracket, and we'll start putting our bolts in through the back side. Now we went ahead and cleaned our caliper bracket bolts and we're putting some thread locker on here. Let's go ahead and feed this through. And once you get that bolt started, we're gonna go ahead and install the lower one. Once you get to start a few threads, I like to go ahead and thread these in as far as you can by hand. And then we'll go ahead and snug those down. Go ahead and torque these bolts on to 133 foot pounds. Let's go ahead and take our brake pads. We're going to install our inboard pad. Install our outboard pad. Get those pressed into our sliders. Let's go ahead and pull our caliper off of our caliper bracket there, our hook, and we'll go ahead, slide our caliper into place, push your slider pins in, get that lined up. Now we'll go ahead and clean up our slider pin bolts and put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. Get those bolts started. Let's go ahead and get these snug down. Let's go ahead and torque down our caliper slide pin bolts to 26 foot pounds. And once you have your caliper slide pin bolts torqued down, you want to hop into the vehicle, pump up the brakes, and get this caliper to compress down around the rotor with your new pads and rotors on here. Then you can go ahead and install your wheel and get that torqued. Go ahead and grab your wheel and get that installed. Let's go ahead and get the lug nuts all started by hand. Once you have your lug nuts on, let's go ahead and snug those down. and torque our lug nuts down to 100 foot-pounds. 